Several giant leaps in human endeavors have resulted from significant steps taken by courageous and pioneering individuals. In faith, Islam, to be precise, it's common for Allah to use bold men and women to make statements and set examples that people around them can follow. That was the role of Dr. Murad Hoffman, a top German diplomat at the time he reverted to Islam. He didn't just revert to Islam, he wrote books about his journey to help others that needed guidance. As Muslims, we are guided by rules stated by Allah and the noble prophet, peace be upon him. These rules, no matter how stringent they may appear, are primarily designed to keep us safe, help us live healthily, and to live in harmony with others without harming them. Being a Muslim means abstaining from any things, such as specific types of foods, appearance, and utterances. In terms of food, the most common is pork and alcohol. While reminiscing on his journey to becoming a Muslim and the things he had to forego, Dr. Murad Hoffman remembered an incident that nearly took his life as a college student in New York in 1951. He was traveling on the road between Atlanta and Mississippi when suddenly a drunk driver driving a truck swerved into his lane, resulting in a nearly fatal accident. He was so severely injured that he lost 19 teeth, disfigured his mouth, and underwent surgery on his chin and lower hip. After his surgery, the surgeon congratulated him, saying it was rare to survive such an accident and that God had something in his plans. That plan was not clear to him until 30 years later when he took the Shahada. Now, imagine the number of lives that would have been saved, the number of people that would have their complete bodies intact if there were no drunk drivers on the road. People drink alcohol because their social norms dictate it, but the effect is more harmful to the drinkers and the people around them. Please don't get this wrong, this video is not about alcohol or its effect, although it could have deprived us of a bright soul like Dr. Murad Hoffman had he not survived that accident in 1951 by the will of Allah. It is about the sterling life of the revered German diplomat. Dr. Murad Hoffman was born in Bavaria, Germany in 1931 into a Catholic family, as was a tradition he was automatically a Catholic from birth. He attended Union College in New York and then Munich University to earn a doctorate in jurisprudence. He later proceeded to Harvard University for his Master of Laws. He started his career as a research assistant for the reform of federal civil procedure in 1957. After his master's, he served as an attaché at the German embassy in Algeria during the battle for independence from France. By 1983, he was NATO's Director of Information in Brussels, a post held for four years till 1987. He witnessed the disposition of the Algerians during the war and was impressed with their attitude and resilience in the face of extreme provocation, persecution, and persistent execution-style killings. He was so impressed with their conduct that he decided to read their holy book, the Qur'an. Because he was sure that was where they got it from. Subconsciously, the Algerians sold Islam to him through their actions, but he needed a little more nudging. I witnessed the patience and resilience of the Algerian people in the face of extreme suffering, their overwhelming discipline during Ramadan, their confidence of victory, as well as their humanity amidst misery. After consistently studying Islam on its merits, the doctor was more informed than ever. In 1980, on his son's 18th birthday, while looking for a valuable gift that would cost more than money, he decided to compile a manuscript containing undeniable philosophical truths about Islam. He showed his manuscript to a local imam to verify. The imam, on reading the manuscript, declared that if he genuinely believed in the content he had written, then he was a Muslim. A few days later, on September 25, 1980, to be precise, Dr. Murad Hoffman declared to become a Muslim. The Algerians played a considerable role in his interest in Islam. 
However, that was not the only influential factor. There were two more factors making three in total. Islamic art was one, as was his quest to unravel the truth about Christian philosophy. Before his contact with Islam, he was a huge fan of art, dancing, and ballet. But after coming in contact with Islam art, he was impressed with the different aspects of the art, that it effectively replaced his love for the other art types. As a Catholic and student of history, he found out that there was a disparity between what the average Christian believed and what was being taught in Christian history. The adoption of Paul's teaching, one who never met Jesus over the original message of Jesus was one. The other was the belief that mankind carries the burden of the original sin and that God, who created, oversees, and owns everything on earth, had to sacrifice his own for the sins of mankind. An idea he wasn't at peace with. He studied works by many great philosophers, which confirmed the existence of a supreme being. His quest for his own answers led him to seek ways God communicates with his subjects. He found the answer to his questions in a single verse in the Holy Quran. No bearer of burdens shall bear the burdens of another. Dr. Murad Hoffman didn't have it all rosy after his conversion to Islam and his pursuit of Islamic causes. His book, The Alternative, which presents Islam as the only viable alternative for Western societies, was a subject of widespread uproar in Europe. Attempts were made to stall its publication with claims that it presented extremist beliefs and supported corporal punishments. Some made calls to recall him from his ambassadorial duty in Morocco. However, the book still went on the shelves on schedule. And after reading the entire content, it was accepted on its merit. His career was not affected though. His decisions to revert to Islam was welcomed by the German government so long as it didn't disturb his ability to fulfill his duties. In 1984, he was awarded an Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany. His book Diary of a German Muslim was distributed across all the German embassies in the Islamic countries. He had an enviable career progression in tune with his education and abilities. By 1983, he was appointed as a Director of Information for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. After four years, he was appointed as a German ambassador to Algeria in recognition of his experience in the North African country. By 1990, he was appointed as a German ambassador to Morocco, a position he held for another four years before voluntarily retiring from the German Foreign Service to focus on Islamic activities.